Welcome back. Now, here's the hot potato question. Who's responsible for the struggling economy, President Obama or the man he inherited this whole mess from, George W. Bush? Well, here's Vice President, President Biden's somewhat surprising take on that question. Let's listen. Even though 50 some percent of the American people think the economy tanked because of the last administration, that's not relevant. What's relevant is we're in charge. It's gotten better, but it hasn't gotten good enough. And so I don't blame them for being mad. We're in charge. I know they're angry. We're in charge. The poll now he's referring to is the new one from CNN. When asked who's responsible for the current economy, a majority of Americans, 52 percent, say President Bush and the Republicans. You hear that? 52 percent say Bush and the Republicans. Just 32 percent say President Obama and the Democrats. That's an allocation of blame about the same as this time last year. It's holding. But Bush isn't on the bout, I would argue, next fall. And looks like it might be a time to change the argument. Alex Wagner's an MSNBC political analyst and Nia Malika Henderson covers politics for the Washington Post. Ladies, thank you for this, for coming on tonight. It seems to me a very most to the point question about American politics. We know the economy is terrible. We know people are very angry about it. Everyone is of every age group. The question is, what's the smart, intelligent thing for this president to say as he attempts to fix it? Is he smart to say it was Bush's fault or did what Bojo Biden is starting to say now, the vice president? Look, we're in charge now. We hope it gets better. We're not going to blame it on the past. Uh, look, I think Biden is taking the argument that we opened up the church doors, there was a baby on our doorstep. It's not our baby, but we're going to take care of the baby, which is effectively what he's arguing for in terms of the economy. It is their responsibility to shepherd it to a better place. The question is, how long is the American public going to give them? Um, thus far, the administration has been reliant on this talking point that it took a long time to get at, into it. It's going to take some time to get out of it. The American public's patience in a time of 9.1 percent unemployment is, is understandably growing thin. I would, I would imagine. Okay, what do you think of that, Nia? Because I was arguing or thinking about arguing that one thing the president ought to do is just say, look, you know, like when you do a skiing event or one of these Olympic events, they hold up the sign 10 point difficulty. I mean, it has been a very high difficulty the last three years. Does he, is he smart to stop saying it was hard and smart to say, look, I'm turning things around. Don't blame the other guys. Blame me. Well, you can see them sort of getting away from that argument and betting that a lot of Americans have been feeling economic pain for years and years and years. Even when I'm out on the stump, you know, I talk to people about, you know, downturns in businesses and they immediately say, oh, well, you know, it's the president's policies. But then if you dig a little deeper, they say this downturn has been going on for quite some time. So I, I think they're, they're getting away from the blame game. They're trying to have a, a narrative where he can say that he's he's uh, turning things around. They've got this American Jobs Act. He's obviously out on the campaign trail. I talked to some campaign folks just before I got on the air, and they think that that's going to give him some momentum, give him something to argue. And then, you know, at the same time, he can sort of point to the Republicans and also say that they aren't doing anything, that not only did they implicitly sort of get us into this mess, but now they're also being obstructionist as he's trying to create the jobs. So they feel like now they're in a pretty good place. But I think, again, we don't know what's going to happen with this American Jobs Act. We don't know if come 2012 he's going to be able to run on a trend uh, that says things are getting better. And if they had a smart political organization, I mean the entire Democratic Party, they would have other people saying it was Bush's fault, not having the president to say it. That's a message that's better delivered by third parties. You get your cabinet maybe to say it. You get members of Congress to say it and governors to say it. Look what this guy inherited. Don't blame him. And then Obama can come back and say, we're doing our best. Here's what we're doing. But they don't have an organized political structure like political parties normally do. That's what I find fault here. Anyway, here's Vice President Biden on the economy, the 2012 election and voter anger. Let's listen. Right now, understandably, totally legitimate, this is a referendum on Obama and Biden, the nature and the state of the economy. It's soon going to be a choice. It's soon going to be a choice. Well, let me start with you, Neil. You report out there on the, with the Post, and, and here's the question. The president had a very sharp day in terms of execution. In fact, they caught a bad guy over there. They killed a couple of them who were out to get us, uh, al Alaki. And the question of t palling around with terrorists reminded me of... of uh, well, that was in force. Of course, that was Sarah Palin. Let me talk to you about something that Bachman said today. She said the president's responsible for the fact that the Democrats were the ones who approved the uh, politically correct loans. Let's listen to her. This is going way back to the Democrats in Congress. Last night in North Carolina, Michelle Bachman laid the blame for the whole economic meltdown on the government and politically correct loans given by Democrats. Let's listen. We all know that it was the government that caused this meltdown. Because the government, through Freddie and Fannie, through uh, keeping artificially low interest rates, 
through pushing the federal government, pushing the toxic subprime mortgages, through the Community Reinvestment Act, forcing banks to make politically correct loans. The system was gamed by the federal government that led to the disastrous meltdown that led ultimately in September of 2008 to the terrible consequences that we are still dealing with today in our economy. You know, that's just old time religion there. I mean, it's not fact. Everybody knows Wall Street is guilty. Everybody knows Wall Street over leveraged. They know that they're the ones that gave all this credibility to these securities. They did it. With the, with the default swaps and all that stuff? Well, the, the, the CRA, the Community Reinvestment Act, is sort of implicating it as this sort of genesis the of the poor financial... people did it. Yeah, it, well, what it is is effectively class warfare. Now, look, some conservative economic, economists are actually going to argue that the CRA played a pivotal role in bringing down in, in the subprime, subprime mortgage uh, scandal. The, the, the issue, though, with Michelle Bachman and sort of her attribution is she completely ignores the fast and loose regulatory environment that led yeah. to financial institutions investing in exotic derivatives. I mean, it's, it's just a gross mischaracterization and a gross oversimplification. Why is she exempting? And, and she, I, I yeah. saying, you know, what, explain the politics of why somebody like Bachman out there. Well, it's pretty obvious. I'm going to ask an obvious question. Why does she hold harmless Wall Street? Not the rich, not the corporations, right. not New York. Nobody did anything wrong up here. It's those little poor people that got those loans to buy houses they shouldn't have had. They were too ambitious to join the American dream. Blame them. Well, it, yeah, and she fails to mention that she, of course, got a loan uh, from Fannie and Freddie <laughs> Her own uh, very uh, lavish home. But, you know, this is an old uh, narrative from the Republicans, this whole idea uh, that, that liberals are, are pandering to the poor and it's the poor people's fault uh, that the economy is in such uh, dire straits because they always have their hands out. You heard, of course, uh, for instance, Newt Gingrich talking about President Obama being the greatest food stamp president ever. <laughs> so there, there has been that, that rhetoric. I mean, even going back to President Reagan, who talked about wealth fair queens and, and that whole imagery. So, you know, she's just playing into that whole whole narrative that has been along, uh, around for a long time uh, and its own, it's its own version of class war warfare. I thought it was Nixon that expanded the food stamp program. I thought it was Bob Dole that fought for that for the farmers. Yeah. I mean, is my history that off? But look, I mean, the history the Republicans and accuracy. Have been affirmative action. If you talk about class warfare, this yeah. narrative of attacking the poor and the struggling and the disenfranchised is what the GOP is effectively running Mr. on Mr. Food Stamp, well, that good, good old nude. He's up there with the well Welfare queen terminology. Good. You're catching up, Newt. You're really today's politician. Go back to the past, Newt. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alex Wagner. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Chris. Malika Henderson of the Washington Post.